Good morning. Welcome to the Movement Church. I hope you're comfortable and ready to receive the word today. If you're new or if this is your first time watching Church Online, then welcome to the family. We're so happy that you're with us this morning. Let's connect on social. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and join the conversation. While you're at it, why don't you share the link with your friends and family this morning? Now, let's all stand, prepare our hearts, and enter into worship. But before we do that, let's watch the movement news. Welcome back, guys, to week two of the series, What I Would Tell My Younger Self. Who all enjoyed last week? What an amazing sermon that was by Pastor Roy. It was such a good reminder that we don't need to impress anyone else. God's already accepted us. He's already turned that chair. We don't need to bother impressing anyone else in this world. How amazing. Now, if you missed it last week, we've got this wall behind me where we are collecting all of your guys' thoughts and tips on what you would tell your younger self. Man, we've got some wise people in this church. I've gone through and read some of these, and these tips are so good. I wish I had you guys as my life coach when I was young. But anyways, we can help the younger generation by sending in more tips to these. If you want to have your tips on this wall, you can DM us on Instagram or you can reach out to your Connect leader. They should have some empty circles like this where you can fill out your tips on what you would tell your younger self. I'm hoping that we can fill this wall up by next week when we finish this series. And I'm so excited to see what we have in store today. All right, guys, catch you next week. Bye.
church are you ready to give this morning you know i have titled this little message of uh, for the offering this morning invest in god's kingdom and i want to talk to you about investments but what is an investment to invest is to allocate money with the expectation of some benefit in the future the benefit is called return and what is the purpose of investing the answer is rather obvious. We invest money to make money. There are a large variety of investment strategies and various ways to prosperity promoted by financial planners. Some might advise in stocks and bonds, and some others might advocate for gold and silver. When we invest, we do it with the future in mind. But friends, what does it mean to invest in the kingdom of God? We read in the book of Matthew 6, 19, 21, that says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Do you know what? Jesus came with a new message when he gives his advice relating to the accumulation of wealth and money. Rather than trusting in riches for our future security, invest in God's kingdom and trust him for every provision. Forget about fighting over the family inheritance or building bigger bonds. Instead, be rich towards God. The only investments that will last forever are those made in the kingdom of God. As you invest in eternity, your investment will last forever and they will never decay, rust or lose value. Your heavenly investment will give a return of changed lives, restore families and eternal souls entering the kingdom of God. Friends, here at the Movement Church, we invest with the future in mind. A lot of energy, time and money is being invested in LOF, Lifestyle of Freedom, the best discipleship program. Marriages are being restored. People are being set free. So many names and faces come to my mind as I speak of new souls coming to the kingdom of God through this program because of your generosity. God is blessing us with a good return of souls. As we prepare to pray and take this offering. Take notice of the QR code on the screen and the different ways how you can give. Will you invest with us? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this offering that is about to be taken. Bless it, multiply it, and use it for the furtherance of the gospel. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. How is everyone doing? Come on, somebody. Touch your neighbor. Give them a high five and say, today is going to be a blessed day. Wow, wow. So wonderful. So good. I am. How many of you are loving this theme for this month? What I would tell my younger self. Wow, so good. I'm so excited because today we're going to talk about what I would tell my younger self. That is, you've got what it takes. So good, hey? You've got what it takes. So you guessed it right. You're probably thinking, this week, we're going to talk about the feeling of being inadequate. 
you know, the feeling of being worthless. And, 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 you know, that feeling of being not good enough in the things that you're about to do, the things that are in front of you. So today, church, let me encourage you that you may feel worthless, you know, you, you, you know but the fact is, in God's sight, you are priceless. Amen? Yes, you. Whatever situation you are right now, whatever you're feeling right now, or whatever you're going through right now, you are priceless in the eyes of God. So good, so good. You know, it says in the Bible, in Psalm 139, verse 14, is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Amen? Some of you look wonderful, and some of you look even more wonderful. Amen? So good, so good. So, you know, look, I'm pretty sure that many of you will be able to relate to this message because I'm pretty sure all of us, you know, all of us at one point in our life has experienced some sort of that feeling of being inadequate, you know, that, that feeling of being not good enough for the task in front of us. You know, if you're that person, you know, let us know in the chat. That's me, that's me, I'm one of those person. You know, and the sad reality is, is that it is in an all-time high. You know, if you're going to do a survey, what the main issue is for all the teenagers in the world right now, what they are undergoing, what challenges are they undergoing? You're probably going to say, oh, it's going to be drugs, it's alcohol, it's sex. No, the top one is actually the feeling of being worthless, the feeling of being inadequate. You know, in fact, 62%, look at that, it's very high, 62% of all the, the, the interviewed social media users feel inadequate. Wow. You know, well, I certainly feel inadequate. You know, I remember when being a first-time parent, we can't help it but question every single thing that, that we do for our son. You know, if he's sick, are, are we doing the right thing? Are we treating him well? You know, am I doing the right thing? Is he allowed to eat this? Is he allowed to, to do this? You know, we question everything and, and we felt powerless. And it starts to affect your whole being, your whole well-being. You know, are you in a similar situation right now? You know, you feel inadequate and you just don't know what to do. So the question is for you right now is, how should you respond to your feelings of inadequacy? How should we respond? So maybe you're watching right now and, and, and you just don't believe that God can, do, can use someone like you. You know, because maybe you're from a dysfunctional family or, or, or you have too much baggage in your past and, and you're a minority perhaps or you're too shy, you're too fearful or just too afraid to try. Or perhaps you think that you don't have enough. You don't speak well enough. You, 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 you don't know enough. You're not smart enough. You sin too much. What do you do? What do you do? Well, the Bible tells us many, many stories about people feeling inadequate and not feeling good enough, and yet God used them mightily. Just look at Gideon, for example. You know, a guy from the smallest family, from the smallest clan in Israel. Look at that. But yet God has handpicked him to save his people from the Midianites who had been raiding the land. How awesome is that? Can you imagine? Gideon was just hiding in a wine press when, when God selected him and called him into action. Just imagine that. He was, he was hiding. He was from a small family. He was from a small clan. Yet God was able to use him. And I believe right now that there is no reason why God can't use you for greater things in your life. Amen? Church, today we are going to focus and we're going to look at the life of our good friend Moses. Amen? So you know the story. When, when God approached him, from the fiery bush, Moses was like 80 years old. And I don't know about you if, you, if you're 80 years old and God asks you to do something, you will feel very unqualified and you will feel very inadequate for the task. You know, and, and Moses offered a lot of excuses not to do the things. So he said, who am I that I should go? He questioned himself. And then God tried to deal with him. And then Moses said, but they won't listen to me. And they won't believe me. So he was questioning his abilities. And then once again, God, you know, tried to spend a few verses telling Moses what to do to persuade the people. But then Moses' next excuse was, God, but I don't speak well. I don't speak too good. 
So Moses had a lot of excuses, you know. For Moses, he had those, I'm not qualified, I'm not good enough, I can't speak. Who am I? You know, he questioned his qualifications. So I have a question for you, church. What about you? What do you feel inadequate about? What do you feel inadequate about? You know, because church, inadequacy is a type of bondage. You know, it's a trap that Satan uses to discourage us, you know, to cause us to be less than God has created us to be. You know, and what the devil is trying to do, he's actually trying to shut you down because he knows that something powerful is about to be unleashed, something powerful, something great is about to be unleashed in your life. Amen? And church, let me remind you that the wonderful thing about God is he doesn't cause us to measure up and then he chooses us, you know. God is not going to be like, oh, after you become successful, after you attain this knowledge, I'm going to choose you. No, it doesn't work like that. You know, God takes our inadequacy and he uses it to create breakthroughs in our life, in your life, and to glorify his name. So church, today we're going to have three reminders that can break us free from the bondage of inadequacy. Are you all ready? Everyone's ready? So good, so good. If you have your notes with you, reminder number one is there is power in what's in your hand. There is power in what's in your hand. Um, You know, I meet a lot of people, you know, even believers, you know, who feel like they, they simply don't have what it takes. They feel inadequate. And they would say things like, Oh, I, I would like to do great things for God if only I had, you know, more money, if only I had more time, if only I had more energy, or if only I had more people around me to help me, you know. But the mistake such people are making is that they're focusing on what they don't have. We focus on what we don't have when actually what the Lord wants is for us to realize that what we, what we have, what we already have in our hands. So by simply, you know, shifting our focus, shifting our perspective, you know, we can trade our frustrations and receive a life filled with miracles and abundance instead. Amen? Amen. Look at the incredible question. You know, God asked Moses this question. In Exodus 4, verse 2, so God said, Then the Lord said to him, to Moses, What is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? So when the Lord asked the question to Moses, all he had was a stick, a rod. You know, it, it wasn't much. It was, it was an inanimate object. It's just a piece of wood, basically, an inanimate object. And God was commissioning him to do a massive task of, of delivering over a million Israelites from the slavery of Egypt. And all Moses had in his hand was a staff was a piece of wood. So my question for you is today, how about you? Do you feel that you have a massive challenge in front of you? Do you feel that you have a massive task in front of you that's scaring you, that you feel like you can't do it? Then you feel like you don't have enough to do that task? Well, let me remind you that you've got what it takes. You've got what it takes. If you just look at how powerful this message is for you and I, you know, like Moses, the same as Moses, you and I, are, we are being called to do great things, to do supernatural things, you know, much, much bigger than we could accomplish, well, more than we can think or imagine, you know, without divine assistance. Yet, very often, and the problem is that we lack, we often tell, my problem is I don't have the ingredients, I don't have the resources, I don't have uh, the things needed for my success. If only I have this, if only I have that. And we complain and we start to, to, to justify why we can't do the things in front of us. But notice what God did to Moses. Focus on this church. God wasn't asking Moses to give him something that he didn't already have. God is not asking, hey Moses, produce this first and then you will deliver the people. No, instead he asked Moses what he is asking you and I today as God is asking you today. What is that in your hand? What is that in your hand? So that means whatever you have right now, whatever situation you are in right now,
God can work with that, you know, if you just surrender it to God, if you just lift that thing to God. Amen? So Moses was carrying this stick, you know, this ordinary piece of wood for like many years, and really nothing dramatic has happened in his life because of his stick. But after Moses surrendered the wooden rod to the Lord, ah, watch what happened. It amazingly became the rod of God instead of just a staff of Moses. It's actually in the Bible, in Exodus 4, verse 20, it says, So Moses took his wife and his sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. So notice it's not longer a piece of wood. This rod enabled Moses to part the Red Sea, to bring out water in a rock, and to defeat the, the enemies, the enemy's armies. So church, whatever you have in your hand right now, it may, be how, it may be very simple. It may be a pen or a laptop or an instrument or a book. When you offer it to God, it's no longer yours. It's no longer Alistair's thing. It becomes God's. Amen? And God can enable it to do mighty things for you and to glorify His name. And soon enough, I believe and I declare that you will be splitting your own Red Sea, that you will be bring water out of your own rock, and you will do great things if you just learn to offer them to God, if you just learn to realize that there is already power in what's in your hand. Amen? So what is in your hand right now, my friend? Is it money? Is it possession? or influence, or maybe some kind of a God-given talent that you have. But if you're going to be honest with me, I'm pretty sure that the thing in your hand probably seems, you know, totally inadequate and, you know, to, to meet the needs around you. It's not enough. It's reality that most of us face. You know, however, you will be amazed by what God can do when you surrender it to Him. Amen. I want somebody to shout amen in the chat. Shout amen. God can do mighty things in your life. God can use whatever is in your hand to create something powerful. I remember a few stories in the Bible like Samson, you know, slayed hundreds of Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey. How awesome is that? You know, David defeated Goliath with a slingshot and five stones. And Jesus, you know, he used a boy's lunch, five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 hungry people. So, church, go ahead and give God what you've been holding onto. And you will discover that anytime you transfer what's in your hands into His hands, He will perform miracles and bring increase in your life. Amen. So, church, are you ready to walk for your biggest breakthrough right now? Amen. Amen. So, if Moses, ordinary staff, can create a way where there is no way, God can do that in your life too. Amen? So good, so good. Reminder number two. Reminder number two, keep moving forward. Keep moving forward even when you're afraid. That's right, even when you're afraid, even when you feel inadequate. Because church, you know what the feeling of inadequacy does in our life? It gets us stuck. It gets us stuck wherever we are. So church, I believe right now is the time to get unstuck. Amen? Because God has great plans for our lives, for your lives. You know, and it's, it's very exciting when, when, when God puts desires and dreams and large visions in our hearts but it can also be challenging because fear always comes against us when we try new things. It's a reality, you know. And then we become afraid of moving, you know, because it, it, it magnifies our inadequacy. It, magnif it magnifies our, our, our lack of those things. And that is how the enemy is trying to keep us from moving forward through fear. He uses fear. So, but instead of giving to our fears, we will choose to be bold. Amen? We will choose to be confident and courageous through Christ. Amen? So as we, you know, as we continue to read through the story of Moses, and this part of the story, they're actually um, in front of the Red Sea. And behind them, not too far back, is the army trying to chase them. Amen? And obviously all of them was gripped with fear. And they, was, and they were stuck. They can't go forward. They can't go back because... 
And what did they do? They cried out to God. They cried out to God, and God's answer to them can be found in Exodus 14, verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? God said, Tell the Israelites to move on. Tell the Israelites to move on. You know, what God is trying to say to Moses is, Hey, Moses, you've already prayed enough. Now it's time to get moving. Now it's time to get moving. The church prayer, you know, is a vital part of our Christian life. It's a very important part of our life as believers. But there is a special place for action to move forward. Because sometimes we already know the answer. We already know what to do. We already know the next step. God has already placed it in our hearts. But we still pray for guidance as an excuse to doing it. Amen? You know, when I um, first moved here in Australia, the main challenge for me was actually looking for a job. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you have experienced that when you first moved here. You know, three months in, going into four months, I still got no job. I've applied probably 10, 20, 50 offices every day and still no calls and not anything. So I was desperate for a job. So when I got an interview for this architectural firm, I was so excited, you know. Oh, man, I'm going to prepare for this interview. I'm going to be ready for this. But during the interview, you know what they said? Okay, Alistair, we use a software called, called Revit. Do you know how to use it? I don't know how to use it. I've never experienced using it before. I have zero experience of using it. So I was honest with them. I told them, oh, okay, I'm not familiar with, with that software. I, I don't think this job is for me. And to my surprise, you know what they said? That's okay. You can start on Monday. I was like, fantastic. That's so awesome. And then, you know, five years later in my second job, I was so excited again because I'm moving to a bigger company, you know, and I was excited again for the interview. And then again, in the middle of the interview, the, the, the architect said, okay, um, we only design hospitals and education buildings. Do you have any experience doing designing hospitals? I don't. And I was, again, I was honest with them. I said, I don't have any experience with this. So I, I will work mostly on residential buildings. And you know what, what did they say? They said, that's okay. You can, when can you start? They just, oh, when can you start? And it was amazing. That's so good. And you know what I learned in both situations is that I could have just let fear of inadequacy take over and say no, you know, and look for another job that I had experienced, it, had experienced with and, you know, save myself from, from maybe embarrassment of, of working with people who had a lot more experience than me. But I didn't because I believe that God will not place me in that situation if he's not going to equip me, if he's not going to help me move forward in my task ahead. So I believe God works in a very similar way in all our lives. You know, sometimes we are faced with a challenge in front of us that is so big that, that it seems that we don't have any experience, that we seem that we don't know what to do in that thing in front of us. It's daunting and strange at first, and you are unfamiliar with it. But I believe that God wants you to, to say to you right now, that's okay. When can you start? When can you start? So what is it telling us? It's God's, it's our job to move forward, to take that step of faith. But it's God's job to make it happen and to clear the way for us. Amen. It's God's job to create a path when there seems to be no path at all. Who would have thought that there would be a path in the middle of the sea? You know, I believe that God doesn't want us to live, uh, you know, a timid, a shy, or a weak, or a fearful, boring lives. He wants us to be bold. God wants us to be confident, to be courageous, and un unafraid to try new things. And, you know, it never ceases to amaze me what God will do through a person who simply steps out of faith. Amen. You're probably going to ask me, bro, how do you keep moving forward with what God said? You know, well, you take that next step, whatever that next step in your faith is. You're being obedient to what God has called you to do. You, you use His power. You trust Him in every situation and you rely on His strength. Amen. Amen. So go to that reminder number two. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. Now, reminder number three. 
So first one is you got power in what's in your hand. Number two, keep moving forward. And number three, complete adequacy only comes from God. Your complete adequacy, your wholeness, your, your overall completeness in, you, in every area of your life only comes from God and nothing else. Amen? Let's open our Bibles to 2 Corinthians 3, verse 4 to 6. So Paul wrote, Such confidence we have to Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claiming anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. Our competence comes from God. And, and, and I love how Paul is, you know, uh, giving all the credit to God for all his accomplishments. You know, because no one, no one can claim to be adequate without God's help. You know, without the Holy Spirit's enabling, our natural talent can only carry us as far. And you may be saying to yourself, bro, I can't do it. You know, but let me assure you, God can. You've got what it takes. God can and He will. Amen. And He's going to use you whatever your situation is, whatever you have in your hand is. And notice when, when the story, when Jesus fed the 5,000, Jesus could have just, you know, waved His hand and, and you know, thousands of food will appear for everyone. But He didn't. He didn't just do that. Instead, He called to his disciples and he said to his disciples will you give them something to eat you give them something to eat you see how God is trying to enable the disciples Jesus blessed the bread and the fish and it multiplied through the hands of the disciples God wants to multiply God wants to expand whatever we have in our hands you know and what is telling us is that Jesus can enable us to do great things no matter how simple you think what you have is no matter how you know, mirror what you have in your hand is, if you bring it to God, He will multiply it. Amen. And your complete adequacy, your completeness can only come from Him. It's not through friends. It's not through alcohol. It's not through internet, social media. It can only come from God. Amen. So church, no matter how much you have or how much you own or, or how many things you've accomplished in life, without Jesus, you will still feel inadequate. It's just the reality. You will still feel empty. You will, you will still feel that there's a hole in your heart without Jesus. Because there's only one thing that can give you that feeling of completeness and wholeness. And that is Jesus living within you because you trust Him and let Him begin to work in your life. So church, if you haven't really accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, will give me a better time than now. You know, if you say tomorrow, well, there could be no tomorrow, you know. So your completeness, your wholeness begins when you accept Jesus in your life. So church, before we end, let me remind you that I'm praying for you, that you begin to realize that God is your complete adequacy. Your completeness only comes from God. God bless you, church. I hope you all have a blessed today with this message and we'll see you all next week. Wow, what a powerful and inspiring message. How many of you were blessed by the Word of God? I sure was blessed. But friends, I couldn't close this service without giving you the opportunity to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You may be thinking, there is no way that I can live to this uh, standard of, that God has. But when you decide, let me assure you that your, He will give you the power and the ability to do it. So I'm going to say a little prayer and I want you to repeat after me. Repeat after me, please. Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. I need you, Lord. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and forgiving all my sins. Today I invite you to come into my life. Be my personal Lord and Savior. Guide me. Lead me to live in your ways. 
all the days of my life. I received your grace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Wow. You know what? If you pray this prayer for the first time, you have just made the best decision in your life. And we want to encourage you to get connected and get planted. You can scan the QR code on the screen right now, and one of your leaders or our pastors will guide you to the next step. Church, we love you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you're blessed with today's word. Don't switch off just yet, we're not done. Now, we have discussion questions for you to go through with your Connect group to help you apply today's learning for your day to day. Ask questions, share, be curious, lean in. You never know what you might learn today. Now, if you're not a part of Connect group, scan the QR code at the end so we can connect with you. Now, don't forget to stay in touch on our social media and I'll see you all next week.